Before diving into building automations with Mercado, it's important to start with a solid plan. In this session, we're gonna explore how to take a business process, break it down into actionable steps, and establish clear goals for automation. We will then walk through a case management process to identify common challenges and see how automation can solve them efficiently. Let's take a look at a typical case management workflow, specifically a process where cases from Salesforce need to be transferred to JIRA for the product team. Prior to automation, here's how that process would typically play out. First, a case is created in Salesforce and time passes while the product team waits for details. Then manually, the team will create an issue in JIRA. More time passes before the product team spots the case and assigns a team member to resolve it. And only after several delays is the case actually resolved. So as you can see, the impact of this manual process is pretty significant. Time is wasted on low value tasks like data entry and manual handoffs. Response times are slow with multiple delays between teams. This leads to higher operational costs as people spend time on data entry instead of strategic work. And we're still customer satisfaction and NPS scores drop because of the delays in addressing customer issues. And in some cases, unresolved issues can lead to lost revenue if the customers churn. So how do we solve these problems with automation? The key is to plan carefully. Before you start building, ask yourself these critical questions. What problem will this recipe solve? We want to automatically escalate high priority cases for engineering to review and accelerate the response and case resolution times. Next, we want to ask ourselves, what business apps are involved? In this example, the automation will access data from Salesforce, Jira, and post notifications in Slack. Is this process time sensitive? Given that we want to reduce time to resolution, we would want these escalations to happen in near real time. We also want to ask ourselves, what are the business rules and logic? We only want to escalate high priority cases in Salesforce, not overwhelm our engineering team with less important cases. And we don't want to create duplicate escalations for the same case. As new updates occur in Salesforce, we would like to update the new information in JIRA. And finally, we want to ask what exceptions might occur. We should plan for the unexpected, such as missing data or system downtime. Salesforce or JIRA APIs may not be responsive, or they could encounter rate limits. And searching by case identifier in JIRA may not be reliable. These are all things that you want to take into account. Once you've asked yourself the right questions, the next step is to map out the process. You can use a flow diagram to visualize each step of the workflow, making it easier to see where automation can drive the most value. Then document your business requirements. This will include the business event that triggers the automation, the object or data that the automation will handle, and any logic about how the data should be processed, whether you're handling everything or being selective. Poor planning can lead to several issues. Automations may not work as intended, causing delays or errors. You might miss critical business logic, or worse, fail to meet important SLAs, which could damage customer relationships. That's why it's critical to spend time up front gathering requirements and understanding the flow of data between your systems. So to set yourself up for success, here's a quick getting started checklist to make sure you have everything in place before you start building. First, ensure that you have the necessary access to all business apps. Then confirm that you have the right Workado role to manage recipes and connections. Use a sandbox or demo environment for testing to avoid impacting live data. Then ensure you have a clear understanding of the data and logic needed for automation. Make sure all user permissions are set up correctly and that you're using a service account, a service account instead of a personal account. And finally, be mindful of API rate limits when using sandbox accounts to avoid hitting limits during your testing. Planning is the foundation of a successful automation project. By understanding your business process, asking the right questions, and preparing thoroughly, you can set yourself up for success. In the next section, we'll take this planning framework and dive deeper into building automations that eliminate manual work and optimize your workflows.